What if we would like to allow a caller to record a message? Is there an element for that? In this IVR Studio video tutorial, we will set up a recording mechanism that will record a caller's message, ask if they would like to re-record, then either go to the record element or continue to an affirmation in a goodbye prompt. We will be using the password protected call flow diagram that we created in the previous two lessons. Here is the finished call flow diagram. We will add elements for recording a message, listening to the message, choosing if it is OK or if it should be recorded again. First, let's delete the correct password prompt and replace it with a record element. With the correct password element deleted, we will create a new child element of Get Password. With Get Password selected, click the Record Element button. We'll name the record element Record Message. This element will have the same entry condition set up as the correct password element, which was the expected password. This is where we set up the naming convention of the WAV file generated. We can use the system variables to add the caller ID name, caller ID number, and the call time all into the name of the WAV file for easy identification. Select VG caller ID name. Click Add Variable. Click the plus button. Now we add the caller's phone number to the string. Select VG caller ID number. Click Add Variable. Now the WAV file will be named something like Jane Doe 555.1212.wav. To create a unique WAV file every time, try adding the timestamp system variable. Click the Next button. Here we will add a voice prompt telling us to record our message. Select the Text to Speech radio button. Notice my less than conventional way of spelling record. The text-to-speech engine uses a noun pronunciation of record such as a vinyl record rather than the verb pronunciation. Sometimes we need to trick the TTS engine into pronouncing certain words. If you find some words in your TTS recording sound funny, use the audio record text-to-speech tool to test how different phonetic spellings can make your words sound more accurate. Click the OK button. Click the Next button. We are now finished with the record password element. Our new element is added as a get password child element. However, the order is important. Right now, no matter what password is entered, the wrong password or log ID element will catch all of the call flows. To force the record element to evaluate the get password output first, we must move the record element to the top of the stack of the get password child elements. To do this, select the record element. Click the Move Up button. An element can be moved up using the context menu too. Right click the record message element. Select Move Up. For our new menu, let's add a choice element. Click the Add Choice button. The choice element will accept all call flows. It will then play the recorded message back to the caller. Next, it will ask if the caller is satisfied with the message, prompt them with the option to re-record, and forward the call to the specified element. The element is set to Always True. Click the Next button. Here we will create three prompts. The first is a text-to-speech prompt telling the caller they will now hear their message. The second will play an audio file that is stored in the system variable. The third is a TTS prompt that will ask the caller if they would like to re-record their message or continue. Click the New button. We use a system variable that currently holds the path of the WAV file that was just recorded. Select VG last result. VG last result is a system variable. It holds the value of last caller interaction. For example, if the caller presses 2, then the value of VG last result is 2. If the caller recorded a voice message, the value is the recorded audio file name. 
Select VG last result from the combo box. Select the audio file radio button. Click OK. Now we will prompt the callers to press 1 if the message is OK and 2 to record the message again. Click the OK button. Click the Finish button. Select the Listen to Message element. We'll call it Message OK. The user presses 1 to enter. Click the Next button. Click the New button. A simple confirmation message and goodbye will do. Click the finish button. Select the listen to message choice element. Now we will add the go to element that we need to pass the call flow back to the record element in the event that the caller would like to re-record their message. We'll call it record again. Trigger it to execute on a 2 key press. And set the jump element to record message. To review, we first delete the correct password element and replace it with a record element. We set the record element's entry condition to our password. We gave it a prompt asking for the caller to record their message, which we recorded to a dynamically named WAV file. Then we create a choice element named Listen to Message. This plays the recorded message to the caller and then asks if they would like to re-record it or continue. Next we have a simple prompt element that tells the caller that the message has been recorded and goodbye. The next element is the Record Again element. It is a go-to element that moves the call flow back to the record element. Click the Save button. Now let's validate and deploy our application. This will end the IVR Studio lesson on recording messages. In the next video, we will launch broadcast by phone from an element.